so this is Mimi for those of you who are new and don't know um, Mimi is most seems to be like a probably half lab she's got webbed feet and she loves the water but she's um she was she was left up in those hills there dumped right after Christmas so she was a Christmas puppy and uh, luckily she was found and we are very blessed to have her and Mimi has joined me in the poly tunnel here on the I think it's the 11th of June and it's just really like an explosion in here I have a mix of ornamental plants and vegetable eating edible plants so that back bed is filled with uh, perennial flower seedlings and then we have tomatoes and more tomatoes a lot of tomatoes courgettes some sweet peas lettuces and back in the corner are some there's a great big onion tomato beets golden beets um, are in there at the minute chives and parsley and we have some over this way we have coriander that's flowering and I planted fresh coriander outside but the slugs enjoyed it and there's none left and we have some basil here and also outside are the last of um I need to harvest the garlic and some red onions and then the red or yellow onion should be ready next I have a little bit of celery because I don't really use celery. I have cut and come again kales. I have one or I have two purple kohlrabis that the slugs seem to enjoy. So we'll see what happens out there. And then I have some other flowers. And but I think we have a visiting hare. I've seen the hare. I I have never seen an actual rabbit up this high on the hill. There are some in the farmland about. So a mile and a half down. But something seems to be sniffing off, snipping off and just trying out some of the flowers out there in a clean cut. So I'm thinking uh, maybe it's maybe it's the hair. Do hairs do that? I have to find out. And um, so I have to every once in a while I have to do a bumblebee rescue and let out these bumblebees because they get a bit confused and they can't figure out how to get out again. So I have a butterfly net there. And we do a bumblebee rescue a few times a day. <laughs> so, yeah, so that's a little look at, well, it's not really because I didn't stand up and show you. Now I have, I'm potting up a few things in the minute. So I have my wheelbarrow for, full of, the potting mixture I use for in here is not the compost that we make outside because I just don't want to introduce any slug eggs or slugs in here because we are mercifully nearly slug free inside here so I use a worm compost it's a certified organic Irish uh, worm compost and then uh, sometimes I'll mix in some again it's some horse manure and it's certified organic now for what that's worth it's an Irish certified organic horse manure but uh, yes so we have this is my little potting area and this is our cushion we lay out and our pillow sometimes we have a nap in here mostly me in the afternoon I sometimes need to have a nap and this is a lovely place and uh, mister and our friend that helps us with the garden um, built the raised beds and laid down membrane everywhere that wasn't me uh, waste beds and then covered this working area with gravel and some paver slabs we had bought as like at the end of a job lot you know they just needed to get rid of so that was really cheap and they just laid them over the sand like they're not cemented in a place so they can be picked up and moved as needed but it just makes this place an amazing dry sanctuary so because the the, the soil underneath us is very damp almost all the time and so um to have all this extra stone means it's it's that bit drier in here and there's more radiated heat as well as obviously being warmer and drier, drier because it's enclosed. Um, like for example, today is pretty chilly out and when the sun goes behind the cloud, 
it's quite cool so I haven't actually opened the end of the polytunnel because it's just not warm enough the breeze blows in here it's actually coming in from from sort of the southeast at the moment so it when the sun is behind the cloud and the chill from the wind it's it's, it's actually not real comfortable outside right now nor has it been for a few weeks so this is a wonderful place to be and if I shut up you can hear all the birds singing they were a bit louder they're camera shy anyhow so this is my special spot indoors and then a special spot outdoors is particularly the secret garden and what we'll probably do is and this let me just show you here this little bumblebee is on the lemon verbena this is a great tea you dry these leaves and you probably use them fresh actually I think I've done that too last year but I have a bunch dried from last year uh, it's very calming so I try to remember to take some of that tea in the afternoon or if I get anxious or in the evening. And then this is, the, that's not real. That's not real, friend. No, I'll get the butterfly net and put you out soon. You're probably ready to go outside. This is a little area where I keep my little seedlings. And then Mistress going to bend, build me a warming bench for later on next year you know when you're trying to grow in the early months of the year and it's just chilly out but you can put your little seedlings on a warming bench so that's a little warming bench is probably going to go along there and my helper so that's um that's a little look at the polytunnel actually i'll give you some i'll be quiet and give you a look at some of the flowers marigolds around the tomatoes purple allison which is a beautiful scent so these are the dahlias and because they're inside to protect them from slugs they're flowering that bit earlier so they're just starting some lilies getting ready to open back there Dahlias are one of my favorite flowers because of the varieties you can get from them. I love, as bedding plants too, I love verbenas. There's so many different kinds of them as well. And you can take cuttings and overwinter them in a frost-free place, keeping them dry. And you can do the same with petunias as well. So I'm going to take cuttings of some of my special petunias as well as the Verbenus nemesius, they smell lovely. And keep them here in the polytunnel. So this, we're going to see this dahlia soon. All different varieties. Sweet peas. Focus. Oh, the scent when you stand right here is amazing. And when you open the polytunnel in the morning. And of course... Beautiful varieties of leaf lettuce, which I need to get cutting. We've been cutting some of the other ones and they, they have been a bit neglected behind. So there. And this is my courgette. I have two courgette plants. One is down here and you can see it has the yellow, little yellow courgettes or zucchinis. I think those are called summer squash in the States. And this is where I got the round courgette. From this morning that I tweeted a photo of and look at the beautiful beet leaves you can eat beet leaves I I often you know a lot of times when you go to the market the growers cut off the beet leaves to sell the beets because most people don't want them 
but you can even when they're bigger like this you I just chop them up and use them as I would cook spinach like I often put them in pasta you know I cut them up nice and fine and cook them up and put them in tomato based pasta sauces really nice and then my breakfast of muesli <laughs> these lovely petunias I just kind of think they're so fun this one's called baby doll this one is starry night and then I got this gorgeous little dahlia what was it called at my local garden center surprise surprise Paula I just love the variations on this and then a fuchsia as well Julia and look here isn't that so pretty? And fuchsias are another one that is you can overwinter as well. There's some of my garlic drying. And I have alpine strawberries. I've potted some of them up. And then these are nicotianas, lime green ones they're going to be. And um, well, look how beautiful the coriander flower is. Isn't that beautiful and delicate? Right. Um... I'm going to let these bumblebees out now. There's a few over there, all right. Thanks for joining me in the Pali Tunnel. I hope you enjoyed the little tour.